Welcome to Bite Size. Today we'll be learning about one of Maya's most fundamental concepts, nodes. We'll be looking at what happens to an object once you've created it, what actually is being created, what you can see in your viewport, what's the outline showing you, your channel box showing you and your attribute editor, and we'll be looking at the node editor and seeing exactly how everything's connected. And with that, cure the intro and let's get started. So what happens when you create an object in Maya? What's going on? Well, let's just have a look at what information is given to us when we create an object. Firstly, we get an object that is placed on the 0, 0 position in space. How do I know? If I look here in the channel box, you can see the translation, rotation, scale are all set to their default. Transition and rotation are set to 0 and scale to 1. That means it's 1 to 1 the size. It means it's not bigger or smaller than whatever size was made. Then you'll see that there's this weird word here that says shape and it says poly shape. If I click on it nothing really happens. And then underneath that there's an input. There's something that's being uh, connected straight into uh, into this poly cube and it's basically if I click on that it's the construction history. It's whatever uh, uh, data is using to construct the history. Let me just make that wireframe for a sec. So firstly, I can you know change the size. I can add you know all of this. This is if is akin to if I go to Poly Cube and go in here and do all of that prior to um, creating this, right? So all in all, this is basically what we're getting. And if we look here in the outliner side, all you see is this Poly Cube one over here, which matches this Poly Cube here. But what is this shape thing here, this polycube shape? What does this mean? Well, let's have a look. If I open the attribute editor, I get a lot more information. I'm getting that polycube one, which is basically this here. Then that polycube shape, which what the heck is this? And then this polycube one, that again is the same name as this, but it's a bit different because it's not P cube. It's polycube, and then I'm getting this construction stuff. So, wh what exactly is going on? What what is what are these tabs? What are, what's happening? What's going on? And, I, and we got more stuff. We got this uh, uh, initial shader group, and there's a, a Lambert one. Um, well, basic explanation is this is position in space. This is the way that um, defines this object, uh, the way it's uh, displayed and what makes it and what object it actually does. It's basically display information of how it's going to behave. Uh, this is the construction, how, how it was built. This is what it belongs to when it comes to shading what it's going to use, which surfaces it's going to use, which volumes it's going to use, which displacement it's going to use to render it out, and then its basic shading group. So this is what we get in the attribute editor, unlike what we get in the channel box, which is just giving us the position data, the position uh, attributes, and the shape attribute, but it doesn't give us anything about the shape attribute, just the polycube's construction. All right, can I see more? Can I control this? Well, of course we can. Maya, in its default state, I mean, in its kind of ideal state, lets you control every one of these tabs separately. Why? Because if you notice that each one of these little things here is animatable, we could also use these to connect other attributes to it or add attributes to it. And how do we do that? 
while we use something called a node editor. Maya has several of these. The two most popular ones, and the ones that are used mostly, is one is the shader, or this thing over here called the hyper shader, which is a node-based texturing thing, which I'll talk about in a different day. It has its own video coming. And the node editor itself, which you can find under window. And you're just gonna slide down to node editor and open this window. Now I'm just going to dock it here on the side for now, just so there's a little more room to work. But if I now grab this object and I will press this button over here, basically what I'm going to see is all of those nodes that are appearing in my attribute editor. Well, not all of them, not the Lambert. It's just showing me this node, this node, this node, and this node. So let's see those nodes. Here is my position node. Here is my shape node. Here is my construction node. And here is my shading node group. All right, so everything that I see in the attribute editor, notice as I click on these, I'm getting the same tabs. But every time I click on one of them down the stream, I'm seeing less and less. See, that one has none. That one has just what's underneath what's coming out of that one. So it's pretty cool as, as I go through them, you can actually see the chain that these actually belong to in the attribute editor. Cool. Now, why don't I see a connection? Because if I press these little buttons here, you could see all of these attributes that I can have coming out and coming in, why don't I see a connection made between this object here, which is the poly position, or it's the no, it's basically the position of this object. Why don't I see a connection between them? Well, it's simply due to the way that Maya thinks about uh, relationships between nodes and this is basically a node a node is is an object or a, a thing that has a whole bunch of attributes or behaviors that are assigned to it and then we can take those behaviors and connect them to another uh, object with uh, different behaviors and have those control each other now what do I mean if we look over here at our outliner, you can see that we only see the top group, the top object, you know, the, the thing that's in the top hierarchy, because this is a hierarchy graph. That's what the outliner is. Now, why don't we see the shape node that lives underneath it? Well, if I go to display and I press shapes it's going to show me the shapes now in the graph and you could see that it's showing me the behavior between these as a hierarchy unlike this that is connected and this is connected which are living in separate worlds they're not actually sitting inside of each other they're sitting next to each other but are connected with little bridges or ropes if that makes any sense but these guys are connected not by ropes and position. They connected by this guy actually sitting inside of that guy. So if I move the position object, it's going to move the shape object. But I cannot choose the shape object and move it because it doesn't have move data. It just has itself. So I'm using this one to move this one. All right? The position data node is moving the shape node. So the position data node, if we look at the position data node and I go out here to the channel box, you can see that all it has really is position data. If I go to the outliner, it has a lot more. It has other things uh, that are related to position data. Uh, it has its matrix, which is basically how it calculates where it is in space. It has its pivot, the mean where its center point is. Uh, it has some display data to it, just uh, so we can control it separately or at the top hierarchy. And node behavior, if it's working or not working. 
uh, UDDI uh, is just uh, a, a number for that node and extra attributes that means if I make custom attributes for it um, then then that will appear here when I go to the shape node you will notice that all I have the data that I'm getting here the attributes that are available to me are everything to do on how it's built the cage that builds the shape it will give me how it's going to draw out the lines it's going to give me the mesh connection display how it's going to display those mesh connections it's going to show uh, mesh controls um, it's going to give me a UD, you know, any map or set that I create uh, that belongs to it the mesh smoothing uh, how it's going to calculate the smoothing of the mesh uh, render stats it's going to decide how if it's going to receive shadows get shadows all of that stuff due to the mesh itself all right and if I go and look at the at the shading group the shading group is going to give me anything to do with the shading group anything that's going to go into the render now I know this video is getting a little longer than usual I usually have these videos 10 minutes but this is a very important um, thing to know about or concept to know about in Maya so I'm gonna have this a little longer than we're gonna make this one 15 minutes and not 10 minutes all right that being said I'm gonna put that aside um, we are gonna now move into let's see show you what we can do with this so now that we know that these are nodes and we can connect them and play with them let's see how that actually comes into um, into practice all right so firstly I got this construction node and if I destroy the connection between it I can change it and nothing's gonna happen to my cube right I could even create a new one so it's gonna be poly CU there you go poly cube and I do that again I'm not gonna explain how I'm doing it. it's just this is more about what you can do with this and I'm gonna reconnect it into there and bam you can see that now this cube is back to its default state so I could always make it go back to its default state if I want to now again things are gonna go massively awry if I start doing extrudes and stuff like that so just as an example I'm gonna extrude and you can see now that the extrude all right I got an extrude poly is connected is now in between these two shapes right so I can now go here take the output and click it into there we get something else and it's going to behave totally different than what I've done there and this is pretty cool I mean you've got a lot of power of what you can do when you do this uh, let's say I want to control the let me get rid of this extrude for now and let's see what else we can do that's a little crazy uh, I'm just gonna plug that back in I delete that extrude let's say I take this uh, the translate X of this and put it into the depth so now when I translate on the X it supposedly as I go through it's gonna make it larger like that isn't that cool so as I'm translating through space I'm actually changing this object's behavior and this is what we can do with nodes this is the power of nodes and how powerful it can be so to sum this up nodes are objects with attributes that can connect to each other uh, to other nodes with other attributes that will then with that chain that you connect will change the behavior of the different nodes down the chain there are different ways to create nodes you can create nodes from a from a list of nodes you can um, just create an object so if we're gonna go create an object like a camera for example the camera will always come in with these two basic nodes the position node and the shape node there's only one or two objects that will not come in with a sh with a position node for example a group node is just that position node but empty without a shape node related to it or if I create 
a let me just do create I was on the wrong menu skeleton that will also just create this bone it has basically it's a position node but it also has other things connected to it that are specific to bones and that's the only two bone uh, nodes that uh, I can think of by default that when you create them come in with without a shape node all right uh, with that, I'm going to end this here. I know it's been 15 minutes, so it's a bit longer than a regular bite size. Thank you very much for watching, and if you like what you have seen, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I tend to answer the questions. If you would like to see any kind of type of video or any subject covered, please let me know again in the comments below. And with that, I would say goodbye and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.